Good morning, folks. The sun fired off a gorgeous CME yesterday. We're going to diagnose it. We'll look ahead to the geomagnetic storms expected at the end of the week and our top science news as well. Obviously, the eruption should have stood out among that opening sequence. The northern incoming active region let loose a solid bit of plasma that took a wicked right turn on its way up and out of the corona. We do see filaments jerk the wheel like this, and this time, it had been aiming directly at Earth, but the jerk to the right took the bulk of plasma in another direction. Of course, here at Earth, the jerk appears to have been to the left. Soho shows majority leaving the corona on that left side of the perspective. There may be a bit of the edge of the CME heading this way, but the bulk is not. But we do also have sunspots born on the south, developed into an active region pretty quickly there. And so as the solar wind this morning is beginning to rise slightly due to the northern coronal hole stream, know that we've got the CME from the filament eruption on its way as well, possibly a bit of yesterday's CME and anything else those new sunspots are going to throw our way. Would not be surprised to have level one or two geomagnetic storms towards the end of the week. First article on the science list today is the first delivery of data from the deep 3600 experiment looking for dark matter. First go and they already have something in common with every major dark matter search ever, a goose egg. The better cosmological study today hits on a scalable principle and uses M17. Once again, it's Sophia showing the magnetic fields in deep space, but here they also recognize that the fields run perpendicular to the matter structure, which implies the matter structures are charged currents of material. Veteran observers, think the Muska filament. Catastrophism buffs, think isotope fiasco. This isn't quite as fun as the one we had earlier this week about redating of the Nova event in space, but it suggests that for decades, They've been messing up dating techniques using silicon and chlorine isotopes. And for those who remember the Tibetan ice cap redating story, that was Krypton fixing chlorine dating. Top marks here, and while we mostly focus on the short-term magnetic excursions, the planet does undergo long supercrons of persistent magnetism, and here they say it's on about a 200 million year super reversal cycle. How playful, considering the event they identify as 400 million years ago. Not very subtle. Always nice to step forward in the climate forcing. Here they are describing the direct ionospheric forcing of space weather, which we know of course affects the global electric circuit and upper jet patterns. And they indicate that X-class solar flares produce up to a 20% change in total electron content in the upper atmosphere. It's no small potatoes. Up next, we're continuing with climate but coming around from the other side. That requires going to Antarctica and this new visualization is available through the Goddard SVS. We've got NASA's imagination playing in here for how the warmer waters, in red, manage to get under the ice cap and melt it from below. But the problem is, that is not what's happening. Folks, since 2013, when Texas scientists found the most melting part of Antarctica had an active volcano under it, this paper makes number 7 or 8 showing that it's geothermal and volcanic forcing at the bottom of the ice sheets, not something you can blame on humans. And last but not least, snow extremes. Folks, this paper makes two big statements. First, it presumes the mainstream global warming story just lets them have their way. Then it shows how some parts of the polar regions would still expect increases in snowfall. But more importantly, even in places that should see a general drop in snowfall, almost ubiquitously, their most extreme events still go up. Yes, so Toronto may be a bit less snowy year over year, but that big storm you get in there could shut down the city for weeks. That's why even if you play devil's advocate, let them call the game in every way. The snow extremes are coming, and the ocean heat transport is shutting down. The Earth's safety mechanisms will kick in. We greatly appreciate your support. Eyes on the sun and space weather this week. Good test of our weakening magnetic field. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 7 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.